age also plays a role, though the role that it plays is different for men and women. During the early years of manhood, sexual excitement, which causes penile erection and a faster heart rate, can occur quickly and frequently. And in response to many things, a thought, a picture, a passing remark. At this age, it is typical for orgasm to follow fairly quickly. After orgasm, there is always a refractory period during which sexual arousal is not possible. In young men, this refractory period is very short. A second cycle of arousal can follow the first almost immediately. As they grow older, however, men require more direct or explicit stimulation to trigger the excitement phase of sexual arousal. And as they age, Increasingly more time elapses between each phase, from the beginning of excitement to the time of full erection, between the time of erection and ejaculation, between orgasm and the end of the refractory period. Basically, the whole process slows down. As is true of the other declines in physical performance that we've discussed, during young adulthood, these changes in sexual responsiveness are not significant enough to cause concern. In reality, slight decreases in sexual function are balanced by the fact that for most men until age 30, the frequency of sexual intercourse increases over what it was during adolescence. This is because they are now more likely to have a consistent sexual partner. For women, age-related trends in sexual responsiveness are not as distinct. As women mature, moving from early adolescence and through young adulthood, they are more, not less likely to experience orgasm during lovemaking. This change in the woman's experience may be directly related to the slowing of the man's sexual response, which results in the sex act lasting longer and providing the prolonged stimulation that most women require to reach orgasm. It is also true that as they mature, both partners are more likely to recognize and focus upon aspects of lovemaking that intensify the woman's sexual experience. Contributing as well is the fact that more recent generations of women came of age in an era of increased sexual awareness and openness. Television talk shows, magazine articles, and conversations with friends about sex and sexuality have played an important role in giving women permission to explore their sexuality. Current research, in fact, indicates that increases in a woman's sexual response may be caused more by these influences than anything else. The effects of aging do not diminish the capacity of male or female young adults to experience sexual pleasure. It does, however, impact upon their potential to reproduce. Even so, surveys reveal that most young couples feel confident that they have ample time to start a family. In fact, the greater tendency is for them to be concerned about having children before they are ready rather than to be concerned about not having children when they are. Most couples need not worry. The majority of women are capable of bearing a first child as late as age 40, and most men can father a child through late adulthood. About 15% of married couples, however, do have fertility problems. May 21st. It's been more than a year since Bob and I decided that we wanted a baby. I thought that by now I'd be writing in my journal as I juggled our newborn in my arms. Instead, Bob and I will be seeing an infertility specialist. A couple is labeled as infertile when they are unable to conceive a child after one year of trying. Infertility increases with age, so postponing childbearing increases its possibility. Statistically, only about one couple in 20 is infertile when the woman is in her early 20s. By the early 30s, that number becomes one in seven. Data on fertility is usually collected in a way that corresponds to the age of the woman, but both sexes play an equal role. June 2nd, a lot of tests, a lot of anxiety. The doctor recommended the drug Perganon. Perhaps I shouldn't, 
But I'm thinking, this is it. Mom agrees. I called her today. The two of us are excited, but I don't let Bob know. He's not the optimist I am. In approximately 40% of cases, the woman is the primary source of the infertility. In another 40%, the man is the primary source. In the remaining 20% of cases, either both partners are equally implicated or the cause for the fertility remains unknown.